Fury. I'm here with Dr. Veltkamp at the International Stroke Conference in Los Angeles. Dr. Veltkamp, as clinicians, we're often faced with the dilemma of how to manage patients who have atrial fibrillation and have, ha and have had an intracerebral hemorrhage. You'll be presenting a trial at this meeting that looked at the, uh, at the efficacy and safety of treating patients who've had a hemorrhage with an anticoagulant. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, thank you very much. Um, this is a long-standing dilemma whether patients with intracerebral hemorrhage and atrial fibrillation who are at risk of ischemic strokes and of recurrent ICH should be anticoagulated. And we did the trial based on a systematic review and meta-analysis which we had done and published in 2017. And this observational data suggested that there was a substantial reduction of uh, ischemic stroke events by all anticoagulants. However, there didn't seem to be any increase of the risk of intracerebral hemorrhage. However, this data was prone to selection bias and confounding by indication. So in our trial called Prestige AF, we uh, investigated first in a co-primary hypothesis whether patients who were anticoagulated with any of the uh, four uh, direct oral anticoagulants had a lower risk of ischemic strokes than patients who had not received an uh, anticoagulant. They might have received an antiplatelet or not. And the co-primary hypothesis, which was hierarchically tested, was whether uh, direct oral anticoagulants uh, increase uh, the risk compared to no anticoagulation of intracerebral hemorrhage. Did you enroll patients with both deep and low bar hemorrhages in the trial? Yes, indeed. Uh, we enrolled both types of uh, hemorrhages. Um, there is a large study observational data based on uh, three uh, prospective registries which had indicated that although there is a known higher risk uh, of another bleeding in patients with low bar compared to deep hemorrhage, there was still a significant effect in those patients. And this is why we decided to enroll both types uh, of hemorrhages, both types of patients. And what was the timing of initiation of the anticoagulant? Uh, we decided that there should be at least two weeks, 14 days after the ICH until patients were enrolled to, uh, uh, into the study. And uh, we enrolled patients up to 12 months after the ICH. What did you find? Yes, so um, our first uh, main finding was that there was a very high rate of ischemic strokes in patients who were not anticoagulated. Um, the intervention with uh, any of the direct oral anticoagulants even resulted in a stronger effect of pr um, protection against ischemic strokes than we had anticipated. Um, we had 20 patients in the uh, direct oral anticoagulated group versus only one patient um, who experienced an ischemic stroke. The second main finding, uh, and this is the co-primary endpoint regarding intracerebral hemorrhage, did not meet our anticipations. Uh, patients who had received a direct oral anticoagulant had a higher uh, rate of intracerebral hemorrhage, substantially higher. We had 10 patients in the direct oral anticoagulant group and only one patient with the first recurrent hemorrhage in the non-anticoagulated group. So we're in a classic situation between a rock and a hard place with regard to risk of ischemic stroke and hemorrhage. What, is, what would be your conclusion, your message to clinicians who are facing these challenges? Yes. So, so the, the study was powered for uh, the primary, the co-primary endpoints. However, of course, we have to take into account secondary endpoints and most of the uh, efficacy uh, safe, uh, sorry, most of the uh, uh, efficacy endpoints were in favor of uh, all anticoagulation. For example, the classical endpoint of other trials of stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation in patients without a prior ICH, which is all stroke and systemic embolism, was very strongly in favor of all anticoagulation. On the other hand, there was this increase of intracranial hemorrhages and out of all major hemorrhages. So as you said, there is a balance, mm -hmm. but I think this balance is more tilted 
towards anticoagulation at this point in time. Is there any uh, recommendation on the optimal DOAC to use? We analyzed this, and uh, so um, the little bit more than 50% of our patients uh, received a Pixaban, 20% their Bigatran, 20% Edoxaban, and interestingly, only 5% Rivaroxaban, but there were no differences between the groups. Excellent. So where do you go from here? So um, I think the, the, the study is a step, I think a significant step forward uh, in this story, but the story is not completely told. And there are, first of all, two other large trials um, that are ongoing. Uh, this is the Enrich AF and also the Aspire trial, mm -hmm. one running, uh, being run globally and the other one mainly being run in the United States. Mm -hmm. Our study was run in Europe and so um, we have certain um, um, ethnicities, so more than 95% of our patients uh, were white, for example. Um, this is a different healthcare system, so I think we need uh, definitely need more evidence uh, from from other parts of the world, and also more evidence towards the secondary endpoints. Great. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Velkamp. So this is an important trial that's helping us determine the best therapy for patients with atrial fibrillation after intracerebral hemorrhage. And as we just heard, there's more to come in the future. Thank you. <laughs>